I promised you more inventory, and we got it. But not as much as I thought we were going to get, and I'm going to tell you why. In this video, we're going to go over the single family and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We'll also do an interest rate update and talk about some buyer perceptions in the marketplace. And for the luxury home of the week, we're headed to a pet house unit in Mandarin Oriental. It's over 8,000 square feet of paradise in the sky. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than 1,000 homes, and I'm one of the state's top agents. If you have any questions on real estate, then no, I'm here to help. Would you be surprised to know it was another weekend of nonstop multiple offer situations? and they were all over the place. I just found out that one of our buyers, they didn't get one, and it was a 16 offer situation. Now the house is in Framingham, was listed for $740,000. Well, I don't know what it sold for. I do know that it went for a good chunk over 820 grand. And this was with a market with diminished demand from so many people being on April vacation. April vacation reduced the demand of buyers in the market, but it also reduced the supply of sellers coming to the market. And this is why the floodgates, by the way, were not necessarily opened up this week. I just forgot all about April vacation, so I just didn't factor it into those calculations when I made that prediction last week. The market, it needs more supply. Or, here's an unpopular sentiment, it needs interest rates to go up in order to shake some folks from the market. Quick disclaimer, this week, comparison stats are going to be a little off as we'll be comparing them to Easter week last year. But this week ended up being a little slower than I thought due to me not realizing, again, it was April vacation week. So let's jump into those single family market stats. We currently have 3,176 single family homes on the market. We are back into the 3,000 territory. This is now an 8% gain in the amount of inventory in the last 28 days, so there's some great news. Speaking of gains, the question at this point becomes, what type of spring inventory gains are we going to see this year? Take a look at what I mean. Can you see the difference between the inventory builds of 2021 versus 2022? Now, the gap between the amount of inventory on the market today versus today last year shot up to 870 units. We talked about it last week knowing that it was going to be artificially low number, and this week it will be artificially high as it's an Easter comparison week from last year. But nonetheless, it's good to see that inventory has recovered a little bit. We had 1,081 houses come on the market this week. Now, this was a great number considering it was April vacation week and a lot of people were away. This is the highest number of houses we've had come on the market in 2023. And to put it in perspective of how much Easter week affects the numbers, this week last year, there were 868 single-family homes listed. So the four-week rolling average is 831 units for newly listed properties. So this 1,000-plus unit number, it's a really great showing. Now back to that Easter week comparison. Our Easter week this year, there were 675 houses listed. So that's a 22% decrease holiday over holiday. Yeah, I, I think that makes sense. 22%, that is right within range of what we've been seeing from a decrease in sales as well as a decrease in new inventory. We had a strong week for under agreements considering we were coming off the Easter weekend. There were 837 single family homes that went pending. And I was really surprised by this strong pending number. To put it in perspective, we put 883 houses under agreement two weeks ago. So our pendings were only off by about 5% with a major holiday this weekend. Now there were 467 homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $799,000 and a median sales price of $600,000. Months of inventory, this is how we gauge what type of market we're in. Zero to five months is considered a very strong seller's market. The closer to zero you get, the stronger the seller market it is. Now this week, months of inventory jumped to 1.76 months compared to last week's 1.5 months. This continues to indicate that it is a very strong seller's market. Real quick, shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you're thinking about buying or selling a home, then I would love to help. It'd be a true pleasure. Now onto the condo market. We have 2,150 condos currently on the market as of Monday. This is a 70 unit increase from last week's inventory levels and nearly 12% more inventory than was on the market just 28 days ago. The inventory gap between this year and last year jumped to 430 units. But like I said about the single family market, the 70 units last week was artificially low and the 430 units this week is more artificially high due to the Easter holiday data. There were 551 condos that came on the market this week. That was a welcome number as the four-week rolling average is 440 units. So this 551 
also marked a new listing high for 2023. We'd actually have to go back to September 19th of 2022 in order to find a week where we had more inventory that came on the market than this week. We had 396 condos going to agreement this week. Like the single family market, this was a pretty strong number considering last week when there was no holiday, we put 399 units under agreement. Now the four week rolling average is 408 units. So we're right within range there. There were 228 condos that sold for an average sales price of $634,000 and a median sales price of $467,000. And then the months of inventory, months of inventory increased to 2.45 months compared to last week's 2.19 months. The condo market, it's definitely the weaker market. It's recovered since COVID, but the suburb single family market continues to be where the true market strength is. I find that really interesting as I would think employers bringing people back into the office would force people to put a larger emphasis on location being closer to Boston. Do you like hearing about what's going on in the Massachusetts real estate market? Then I appreciate you hitting that like button as it makes a huge difference to those YouTube gods and subscribing. <laughs> that one doesn't hurt either. So feel free to hit that subscribe button. Last week, I predicted that if inflation came in lower, then interest rates were going to go down. If it came in on target or higher, then interest rates were going to go up. So, inflation, it came in lower, and interest rates, they went up. What the heck? How does that even make sense? I don't really think anyone understands what's going on in the market right now. With inflation going down, then that gives the Fed some room to maneuver, and the Fed needs to maneuver. This economy, it's a mess. Throw in a lifeline before things get really bad. That's what I say to the Fed. Now, mortgage rates are now near one-month highs. Great quote. In the slightly bigger picture, this leaves us slightly higher than the middle of 2023's range, marked by lows near 6% in early February and highs just over 7% in early March. Those levels can be thought of as opposing sides in a battle to determine the next major trend in the interest rate world. Which brings me to this article. Today's home buyers have their mortgage rate tipping point, and it's artificially low. Now, the article points out that homeowners are exceptionally sensitive to mortgage rates with high home prices. So high, right? Which, by the way, I did a video that actually answers the question if this is the most expensive time to ever buy a home. And spoiler alert, it's not. You need to check out that video. I have it linked up here, and it'll be at the end. A great quote in the article is, after years of government intervention following the Great Recession and the first years of the COVID-19 pandemic that kept mortgage rates artificially low, today's buyers have a skewed view of what normal mortgage rates are. Nailed it. So many people I talk to say that they are waiting for rates to go down. We asked the question about what rate the buyers would need to be back in the marketplace. And you wouldn't believe how many people will say 3% or even 4%. It's not a laughing matter, but it makes you want to laugh and just feeling sorry for them. They are used to the 3% interest rate environment and think that is normal. It's not. They did a survey and found that 71% of potential home buyers say that they will not accept a 30-year fixed rate mortgage over 5.5%. Keep in mind, the current rate is in the low to mid sixes right now. In addition, 62% of buyers believe a historically normal mortgage rate was below 5.5%. The average going back to 1971 is 7.75%. If there was one thing that I learned from COVID is that people, well, they adapt relatively quickly, and I cringe saying this, to the new normal. Just give it two weeks. No, I'm kidding. With time, this perception will all change. And quite frankly, thank God these guys are willing to pay 100% interest rate renting a property. Because if they didn't, then the market would be, well, screwed. Demand, it's already far outpacing supply. We don't need any more demand. To the people who really think that housing is the most expensive that it has ever been, then you really need to watch that video that I mentioned earlier. I will have it at the end of this video as well, so just click that screen. And really quick, I just wanted to chime in on the commercial real estate market as well. I've been talking a lot about it. And if you're new to the channel, then it's important to know that this is where the market crash will actually happen. It's not in residential, it's in commercial. But I had some time to kill the other day, and I was just walking around the leather district in Boston. You would have been able to pick my jaw up off the sidewalk as I took note of all the vacant offices and storefronts. And I was talking to a friend who does commercial lending, which, by the way, if you need some commercial lending, then let me know. I'll pass you Emma's information. She's awesome. But she was talking about how there is negative absorption in the commercial market right now. What does negative absorption mean? That's a really great question. What that means is that companies out there, there are less of them taking space and more of them giving back space and it becoming vacant. 
And this is all even before an economic contraction where it is certain that this issue will only get worse. Now that I've mentioned it, next time you're walking around the city, maybe take a note for yourself. Also, we need to talk about the bullwhip effect because that's going to be a huge thing towards the end of 2023 with new bills. The data just came out today that new construction permits and starts were down. This one, it's going to hurt a lot of markets. Not ours, but a lot of markets toward the end of the year. And now to that luxury home of the week, which is located at the Mandarin Oriental at 776 Boylston Street, Unit E12-C in the Back Bay. For starters, these guys get a front row spot to the Boston Marathon. Now, this masterpiece of a home consists of four bedrooms, five full baths, and three half baths that span 8,360 square feet. The exceptional layout is perfect for entertaining on a grand scale, as it is complemented by two private balconies that offer commanding views of the back bed. Now, the best way to describe the inside of this home is calling it a work of art. The home boasts soaring ceilings, museum quality lighting, and floor to ceiling windows with unobstructed views. Now, this home is curated for the supremely discerning buyer as it provides ultra luxury modern living that the Mandarin Oriental has become known for. The condo has three parking spaces and a condo fee of $18,843 a month and a yearly tax bill of over two hundred and twenty grand. This stunning condo is being marketed with an asking price of $29 million. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? I do the luxury house of the week, well, just for fun. But my specialty and my love, it's helping the normal guy, not the gal buying a $29 million penthouse apartment. And when it comes to helping people sell, well, my goal is to provide that same service that the $29 million penthouse folks get, but for those non-$220,000 per year property taxpayer folks. Every person's home is their castle, and they deserve to be treated that way. My information, it's in the description below. You can also reach out to me at youtuberealestateagent.com, fill in a little bit of your info, and then I'm going to reach out to you. Truly, whatever way works best and is easiest for you. I personally love to talk about real estate. So whether you're looking to buy or sell a home in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out a little bit more about your real estate goals. Questions or comments about any of this market data, then drop me a line in the comment section below. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm always going to take the time to respond to you. Until next time.